All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from K Hux Nation, and we are back with another Dragalia Lost episode. I know it's been a while since my last one of this. Um, I scapped the last sh showcase uh, due to various reasons, uh, on top of the fact that I just partially didn't feel like making that video, <laughs> so I skipped it. But at the very least, uh, I wanted to get back into the, the swing of things. So we're back with a new unit, Gala Elisane. Okay, we're gonna go over here, uh, as well as just like usual, go over her abilities, uh, give my thoughts on how good I think she is, um, and then whether or not maybe it's worth pulling for. Okay, and chances are you'll probably notice a little like bar in the bottom of the screen. That's something new I'm trying out as well. I'm kind of doing that across all of the new, uh, all of my gotcha videos that I do for the various games that I have on the on the channel. So yeah, just pointing that out if that ends up being helpful. Let me know how, how if you like it or not. But other than that, let's go ahead and jump right into things. So this is Gala Elisane. That's what she looks like. She's a five-star water axe unit. Little curious, or not curious. It's a. I'm a little intrigued by the fact she's an axe unit. Um, going on though, her skills. First activated ability is Holy Accord. Increases the strength of water attuned adventurers in the team by 30% for 15 seconds. That's not too bad. Celestial Ascent. This one is a freaking mouthful. You see how long this freaking text is Jesus Christ it's I I'm I'm uh, to be uh, the best way to put it I'm just kind of conf confused by this ability um, not that I don't understand it I understand what it does and, and what it's saying and stuff I'm just like confused by the fact of why they would make an ability work like this if that makes sense um, but anyways let me get into it so it's called celestial ascent this is what it does Deals water damage to enemies directly ahead, increases the user, user's energy level by three stages, increases the entire team's flame resistance by 25% for 30 seconds, and grants all teammates a one-use shield that nullifies damage less than 20% of the user's max HP. So far, so good. This is act, like that's actually a pretty nutty ability. It's not only an attack ability, but provides a bunch of defensive buffs for the entire team, too. That's kind of nuts. Kind of nuts. Um, most notable for me is the flame resistance by 25% for 30 seconds. Because, obviously, you're most likely going to want to run a water team into a fire quest. Or, in the case of the higher end content, such as against like High Bruhelda, for example... That might end up being really good, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Um, anyways, it's the rest of the ability that's kind of like, uh, why though? So it says neither the shield nor the increase in the flame resistance stacks. So the the one you shield, these like any any one you shield ability typically doesn't stack. So. That one makes sense. However, the flame resistance, I'm surprised that that can't stack. And I, if anybody more experienced or more knowledgeable could help me out in the comments, uh, I'm not sure if the flame resistance that it's talking about is flame resistance across the board so like it doesn't stack even with your worm print or it only can't stack with its own ability so like if i use the same ability like twice in a row in the span of like five seconds <clears throat> however way i do that um it won't stack with itself that's what i mean like can i still stack it with a worm print but it just won't stack with itself or does it just not stack period that's what i'm interested in um i my gut instinct is telling me that you can still stack it with a like worm print ability for example it just doesn't stack with its own ability or with other activated abilities that's my gut instinct but if i'm wrong please let me know in the comment section also says uh the, the rest of the ability says the skill gauge for the skill can be filled by attacking enemies which is normal okay that's how you normally charge up your abilities in the game but it will also gradually fill automatically 
during Divine Revelation, which is one of her passive abilities, okay? Abilities that increase skill gauge fill rate will not affect this automatic increase, which is, again, normal. We've seen that with other units as well, where if their gauges increase automatically, uh, things like skill haste, for example, won't uh, make it go up any faster. It doesn't affect the, the automatic increase rate, okay? So that's normal. When the This is the strange part, though. When the user is not under the effects of Divine Revelation, the passive, Attacking enemies will still fill the gauge, but it will decrease automatically over time unless the gauge is already completely filled. That's the strange part to me. So basically, if your passive is not active and your and the skill's not completely filled yet, it will just start decreasing over time unless you're hitting people. To I don't know about anybody else, but to me that's a little strange. Um now, I think I might understand why they did that, just to help prevent uh, the skill getting a little too OP, too out of hand, especially with just how many defensive buffs the team is getting across the board. Um, so I'm willing to bet that maybe during testing or something, they noticed like, yeah, this is a little broken. Let's add some type of uh, downside to the ability to keep it in check. So that's what I think this is there for. Um, although in the right type of environment or against, you know, in the right type of quest, I don't think this should be that much of a problem, pro especially against like higher end content, for example. Um, uh, so even like the, the high dragons or even, uh, any sort of like raid boss or whatever, or void and everything, uh, void quest, you're pretty much hitting something almost the entire time. So the chances of you not hitting something and having the gauge deplete and not having your passive activate too um, should be fairly low. So I don't think it'll be, it'll really be that much of a hindrance, okay? You might barely notice it in a lot of situations, to be honest. Um, the only times I feel like that will actually matter most is during specific situations, like during normal story quests, for example, where you have to like run across a room and you're not hitting anything that like that would be during the time when it's going down the gauge is going down um, another instance might be like if you're in a really tight spot against a difficult uh boss um it'll be during moments when like you're just dodging for a good like 10 15 seconds just to get away from like all the craziness that the the boss is doing um i feel like those will be like pretty much one of the few moments in which case you might see your gauge going down a bit but for the most part i feel like you should easily be able to get this, the, the skill filled up on a relatively normal basis. Anyways, uh, and then it mentions the normal level, energy level stuff. That when it reaches level 5, next attack or, you know, next skill gets upgraded type of thing. Next up, the co-ability has defense plus 50% go co-ability. Okay, decent. Average. Uh, passive ability, Divine Oath 2. This is where the Divine Revelation comes in. Elisane will gain the Divine Revelation effect for 13 seconds if any of the following occurs. One, her Force Strike connects. Or two, she uses a skill. Or three, she executes a 10 hit combo. All right, this should be pretty easy, okay? As basically as long as you're fighting is what it's saying. As long as you're fighting, You'll get the Divine Revelation effect for 13 seconds. The effect cannot stack, and when it is active, Elisane will be immune to knockback, which is actually kind of cool. Um, especially considering the fact that she is also, as mentioned by her second passive, Heaven Shield 2, she is 100% uh, immune to burning and stun. So on top of immune to burning and stun, again, perfect for like high Brihilda uh, content. She, when you have uh, Divine Revelation in effect, basically almost all the time, you'll also be immune to knockback. That's honestly pretty good. Uh, she has Prime Strength plus 10% too, which is honestly kind of icing on the cake at this point. Now, one of the few, one of the things that I kind of been forgetting to do in my last uh, few like showcase videos for Dragalia Lost is 
I've been forgetting. I like I get into the. It's probably because of the fact of uh, my experience in other gacha games, uh, but I had the habit of comparing the new unit to all units across the board. But I kept forgetting that in Dragaya Loss, you are more likely reliant on mono attribute teams. Um, so I've been forgetting to actually compare the new the new units to. Uh, units within the same attributes okay so my apologies about that uh i will start doing that from this video onwards though okay so and what i'm actually going to do is actually kind of talk about it from both sides i'll talk about it from like like in an overall perspective and then i'll talk about it from a uh just that attribute perspective just to kind of help you oops just to kind of help give you guys a little bit more of a uh generalistic holistic uh, like viewpoint if that makes sense so starting off with how good i think she is um from a overall perspective okay so comparing her to like all units across the board in the game so like if you wanted to do like a rainbow team or something um in my opinion she's kind of lackluster okay um it's worth noting too that she kind of has to be and a purely water-based team in order for her to get any value in her whatsoever just because of the fact that her uh, first ability only increases water adventurers, their strength by 30%, and her second ability um, gives everybody resistance to flame, to fire by 25% for 30 seconds, which is... I guess decent, but again, if you're running into a fire stage or a fire team, you're probably going to just want to run a mono water team in the first place. So it's kind of redundant at that point. Um, and, and like, and that's the most notable part about her uh, second ability, in my opinion. So really, it's uh, and like this ain't even attack too. I should probably add that first ability. That's just literally just a buff. It's not even attack. It's just her, only her second ability. That's the only actual attack she has. Uh, so she's actually kind of lackluster compared to other types of like DPS uh, adventures in the game, other units and stuff. Okay. Um, although now in a water-based team, okay, in an actual purely water team, she's actually going to be one of the best water units uh, in the game as of right now. Okay. Partially for obvious reasons because of her skills uh, and her activated abilities. Okay. Now. One of the other main reasons, though, isn't just because of her skills, it's because of what's currently available in the water teams, okay? So if we were to take a look at some of the other water units in the game, I already kind of uh, picked some of the more viable ones, all right? So right now, oops, that's not her. Right now, there's only one other, like, five-star uh, water axe unit in the game, and that is Summer uh, Julieta. She's not really that viable, though. Just because of the fact that she is very reliant on activating bog. Okay, if the enemy isn't afflicted by bog, then her value just goes down a whole lot. Okay, and against uh, like high Bruhelda quests and stuff, I believe high Bruhelda does not get afflicted by bog, so she kind of becomes a little useless. Um, at least compared to everybody else so she kind of falls out of that in which case that just kind of already automatically places uh gala ella saint as the best water axe unit in the game okay now compared to like other uh actual like dps units in the game too if my computer would you know actually load we have Xander, okay, who is also a pretty good DPS water unit. However, Xander completely relies on needing uh, a bunch of like little minions to kill first in order to rack up his uh, his abilities, his uh, strength uh, percentages. Hold on, where is it? Where's the ability? Let's see. Uh, I believe it's a passive. Yeah, it's the passive. Because of his passive right here, Striker's strength uh, plus six percent increases strength by six percent for every three enemies defeated with four strikes up to five times per quest he needs little minions in order to rack up 
his passive ability okay if you don't have little minions to do that with he it becomes less than ideal um in that case so against like just strictly single uh boss fights such as like hybrid hilda or even like a lot of raid quests and stuff he's not nearly as ideal as you would like him to be um, he's good in a lot of other types of quests maybe like the uh imperial onslaught quest for example he's pretty good there uh but against like the more higher end content he's not nearly as good so uh yeah that that's compared to him okay the other units that Okay, the other DPS units or, you know, viable units that you might compare to are Lily. Lily's pretty good. Okay, she's a very ranged unit and she has a really good freeze ability, which is also pretty good too. Brihilda, I believe, is afflicted by freeze. Uh, so that's pretty good. Okay, but she is kind of fragile at close range on top of the fact too that she has this one ability. Where is it? Oh yeah, she has this one passive ability where it makes her a little HP gated. She has to be a full HP to get the full max strength plus 13 or 15%. Um, I never like HP gated abilities. Uh, I'm a little iffy to that. I, I, I never felt comfortable about that. So, uh, But she's a pretty decent unit overall too. Okay, but she has, you know, uh, weaknesses that come from being a, was it a staff user? Wand user, wand user. Okay, Solaria is going to be one of the best supports. Uh, five star supports. Okay, and then we have Zeinfried as well, who's also another support. Uh, so pretty much, Gala Ilsane is going to be straight up basically one of the only viable water units in the game that's just usable across the board, regardless of the situation. Okay, she doesn't, she isn't restricted by any sort of uh, ability that makes her usable in only specific types of quests essentially okay kind of like the other units i showed you that it compared to where like she isn't hp gated by anything uh she doesn't require needed beat up minions in order to actually get the full value out of her she is literally a self-reliant character on her own you can throw her into any type of quest, any type of fire quest, in a pure water team, and she will just be perfectly fine and just shine for the entire team, okay? Um, I have no doubt in my mind that she's going to be a little bit of a crux in a lot of water teams from this point onwards, just because of the fact that not only do water units already have resistance against fire uh attribute enemies in the first place but because of fact she already she gives another flame resistance on top of that okay and i don't know how good the one you shield is gonna be is to be honest but at least the flame resistance alone is already gonna be absolutely massive and on top of the fact too that you're giving all of your water units your entire team 30 percent extra strength and that's just from her alone that's not even counting any of your other three water units that you might have in your team Okay, so um, just taking into consideration Summer Solaria, for example, she provides a lot of boss too. So Summer Solaria is a pretty like well-rounded unit as well. The only drawback about Solaria is the fact that she's a sword unit, so her range is a little bit short. Other than that, she is like solid too. She's a very solid unit. All right, she where's it? Where's her abilities? Okay. Um, her second ability, Pep Talk, is just absolutely amazing. Provides defense for the entire team for 10 seconds and activates skill shift. Uh, so basically, activates double buff automatically. Boom. Okay. Extra defense on top of flame resistance from Gala Elisane. Okay. That's already pretty good. Uh, where is it? For phase two, increase the entire team's strength again. That's more strength. And phase 3 increases the attack rate for all your teammates. That's even better for Gala El Sane because it makes it her second ability just stay up more often. Okay, helps make sure too uh, that the uh, gauge decreasing automatically doesn't happen nearly as often as well. So Summer, Summer Solera is going to definitely be one of the best uh, support units as of right now to be paired up with uh, Gala El Sane. So... And then from there, you can just kind of take your pick as for like uh, your DPS, like your other units of choice. Okay, you can have like Lily or Zenfried on your team. Okay, um, 
and then whatever fourth unit you want. So overall, Gala and Sane is an amazing unit. Uh, in terms of whether or not I think you should actually pull for her, uh, one of the main things I would probably recommend is that maybe only pull it for her if you really need a water unit or like a really good water unit. Chances are you might just because of the fact there's actually not a whole lot of what like five star water units in the game. Um, even myself, when uh, just when she came out and I took a look at my water team, I didn't really have a full water team just yet. I only have like three water units. I had like one healer, I had uh, Summer, Solaria, and Lily on my team, okay? But I was still missing like that fourth decent water unit. So I was like, eh, why not? I'll try pulling for uh, Gala El Sane, or at the very least, I could try and get another water unit. Okay, from, from this pool. And I managed to get her. So she's definitely going to be like one of the crux heroes on my team for sure. So definitely a very good unit for the water adventurers. Uh, but for ag adventurers across the board throughout the entire game, not nearly as much. Definitely one of the best for water though specifically. So it's up to you if you want to pull. Those are my thoughts about the unit. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KHUX Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.